Welcome back into Wake Up America. Happy Monday to you. The situation at our southern border not getting any better as a caravan of migrants now makes its way to the border. For more on what's going on, I want to bring in former acting Border Patrol Commissioner and Newsmax contributor Mark Morgan. Mark, we're joined by our panel this morning as well. Commentary editor for The Washington Times, Kelly Sadler, is here. And Project 21 National Advisory Board member and radio podcast host Christopher Arps is here as well. Uh, Mark? Uh, the president spoke in Florence, Arizona on Saturday night. We covered that here on Newsmax. Uh, I was a part of that coverage. And your name was mentioned uh, by our 45th president. He said that, that if you were still in charge, maybe the crisis at the border wouldn't be a crisis anymore. But here we go. Uh, what's the latest with this caravan making their way north right now? Yeah, it's just another example of how it's, it's not just about the, the catastrophic numbers coming across. It's about the consistent message that's being put to the cartels and the smugglers. Look, they know our borders are wide open, and this is not going to stop. The, the latest caravan is just another example. Look, we had November, again, the highest number uh, uh, for any November on record. The first 12 months of this administration, we're looking at over 2 million apprehensions. And, Rob, I know you and I have talked about it a couple times, but I don't think we talked about it enough, is, is the other numbers. 600,000 gotaways, those that have evaded apprehension, and wow. 400,000 turnbacks. You add that up in the first 12 months, that's over 3 million migrants that have tried to illegally enter our borders. I mean, it's absolutely, our borders are out of control. It's a wild, wild west right now. Yeah, no, I mean, it absolutely is. And, you know, this administration, about this time last year, give it a month or two, said this was a seasonal um, and that it would go away in the summer. And we just right. saw those numbers never decrease. But, Mark, an another aspect of this is, you know, among 18 to 45-year-olds in this country, it's not COVID that's the number one killer. It's fentanyl. What can this administration do to, I mean, not only do we have all of these illegal aliens crossing the border, but we have this huge surge in drugs also coming across the border. How do we get a handle on this situation? Yeah, so look, there's a lot to unpack there, and I couldn't have said it better myself. First of all, you know, people ask me, Mark, you, you've got to be frustrated because you were part of a, a great team of, with ICE and the men and women of CBP that really secured our borders and, and gave the Biden administration the most secure border in our lifetime. That's got to be frustrating. My answer is yes, but what's equally frustrating is they're lying to the American people about it. That seasonal issue was was just one example of many. And the, look, this is why I keep saying this is not a Republican or Democrat thing. This is first and foremost about border security. And look, when you have two million illegal uh, mi migrants that are apprehended, 50, 60 percent of border patrol resources are pulled off a of national security mission, leaving the large areas of the border wide open. And what happens? Just as you said, drugs are pouring into this country. Meanwhile, this administration is ignoring everything that's happened at our southwest border. But yet, at the same 12-month period, 100,000 Americans died from drug overdoses. But you never hear a word from this administration about that. Mm. Mark, we've had a record number of illegals. 150,000 were placed into this so-called alternative to detention program last year. How many of those people would you say are actually going to show up for their court hearings? What percentage? <laughs> Less than 8 percent. Historical data shows this. And look, this is another good question because that, that is just a microcosm. Look, I, I'm being conservative when, when I, the, the numbers as I see it, this administration has actually released more than 800,000 illegal aliens into these United States. You add in the 600,000 gotaways, that's 1.4 million illegal aliens that have been released into this country. And look, whether they give them a, a notice to appear or notice to report, the historic data shows over 90 percent of them fail to show up and abide by court order removal and remain in the country illegally. Meanwhile, the administration, under the DHS Secretary Mayorkas, has also re reduced 90 percent of ICE's uh, enforcement authority to actually remove someone that remains in the country illegally. That's where we're at right now. Wow. Mark, let me play a soundbite uh, from President Trump in Florence, Arizona, on Saturday night. You might hear a name that, you, uh, that you're familiar with. Take a listen. Few could have imagined that he would be such a disaster for this country, what they've done. Inflation is the worst it's been in 40 years. Gas prices are up 50 percent. The grocery shelves, the department store shelves, they're empty. You had an excuse not to buy Christmas gifts. You say to your loved one, darling, I'm sorry, I love you very much, but I just can't. There's no merchandise in Tiffany. There's no, I wanted to buy the most beautiful ring, but they don't have any rings anymore. Nobody has anything. Under my administration, with the help of two great men, these are great men, 
Tom Homan, did you ever hear of Tom Homan? You never want to get in a fight with Tom Homan. And Mark Morgan, these are two great men. Well, Mark, there you have it. Uh, and we know that, that our 45th president watches Wake Up America with some regularity. Um, he, he's told me so. Uh, I'm curious why you think he chose Arizona. Now, now obviously, Arizona is a state that was incredibly close in the 2020 election. Um, he evidently lost that state by, by just about 10,500 votes. They've got 11 electoral votes in Arizona. He won it in 2016. Um, he chose Florence. He could have chosen Phoenix, but Florence, south of Phoenix, just north of Tucson, pretty close to the border. The border is going to be an issue, I think, in 2024 as well. Yeah, Rob, I think you're absolutely right. First of all, I, I really took that, you know, him giving uh, Tom Holman and I a shout out. It's really a respect to the incredible men and women of ICE and Customs and Border Protection who have just done a tremendous job, you know, under his presidency to secure the border and protect this administration. And look, you're right. He, he chose Arizona for a reason. Not only is immigration going to be one of the top issues for Americans, and Arizona is, is a state that's getting hammered uh, by, by the catastrophe on our southwest border. And that's exactly why we need uh, candidates like for Senate, like Jim Lehman, who's out there, who is a strong border security advocate. And I, I think he obviously went to Arizona for design. Yeah. Yeah, very good point. Um, we'll hear more from the uh, the former president as the year goes on and we get closer to November the 8th, 2022. Uh, all right, we'll leave it there, panel. Thank you very much. Mark Morgan, great to see you. Kelly Sadler, as always. Christopher Arps, see you again real soon. Thank you, guys. I enjoyed it. Thank you. All right.